Crocodilians are famously very similar to their ancestors from the Cretaceous period. However, there was a time when their ancestors were very different. Instead of large, semi-aquatic predators, they were small, and lived on dry land. These crocodilian ancestors were not crocodilians themselves, which only consist of all living species and the other descendants of their last common ancestor. Instead, they were members of the larger clade Crocodiliomorpha. How they transitioned to the water has largely been mysterious. The earliest known members of Neosuchia, the clade of largely semi-aquatic crocodiliomorphs that includes crocodilians, are mostly known from cranial elements, and those that are known for more complete skeletons had already changed greatly from their terrestrial ancestors. However, a newly discovered species of crocodilomorph named Berksuchus has recently helped to fill in the gaps. It lived 147 million years ago during the Jurassic period, in what is now southern Chile. While not known from a complete skeleton, Berksuchus is known from postcranial material from throughout the body, and still retained many primitive features that show how crocodilians took to the water. While the limbs of modern crocodilians are held in a semi-sprawling posture, the limbs of most terrestrial crocodilomorphs were actually held upright. Combined with longer legs, they were much more capable on land but faced greater drag while swimming. Berksuchus' limbs were instead held in an intermediary position between these two extremes. Interestingly, Berksuchus' limbs suggest the changes that led to the current crocodilian posture did not happen simultaneously across their limbs. The hind limbs were similar to those of crocodilians, while the forelimbs were held in a comparatively upright position, if not to the same extent as in most land crocs. Given how modern crocodilians are slightly hind limb dominant, there may have been greater evolutionary pressure for those limbs to shift to a sprawling posture than their forelimbs. Berksuchus' pectoral girdle, the bones the forelimbs were attached to, has a mixture of atomical traits present in either crocodilians and other neosuchians, or their terrestrial ancestors. While no bones from Berksuchus' tail have been found, the femur had a large fourth toe chanter and muscle scars which suggest its tail already had muscles similar to those used by modern crocodilians when swimming. Despite the size of many of its more advanced relatives, Berksuchus was only about 70 centimeters long. This is about as large as most terrestrial crocodiliomorphs from the Jurassic period. It is thought that, like mammals, the size of terrestrial crocodiliomorphs was largely constrained by the presence of the theropod dinosaurs, who held most of the carnivorous niches higher in the food chain after the mass extinction at the end of the Triassic period. Some early Neosuchians, like the Atoposaurids, were also small. Therefore, it would seem the ancestors of crocodilians only grew larger after they became semi-aquatic. The semi-aquatic phytosaurs had become extinct at the end of the Triassic period, which left the niche of large, semi-aquatic predator vacant. This allowed crocodiliomorphs to replace them, at first hunting smaller aquatic prey and then growing larger to take advantage of the lack of competition. As they grew larger, some of them started to hunt terrestrial prey on the shore. While small, Berksuchus was well protected. Most crocodiliomorphs had osteoderms, or bony plates, on their skin. Berksuchus' osteoderms were wider than those of its terrestrial ancestors. Like early Neosuchians, the osteoderms on Berksuchus' trunk were as wide as the cranium. The trunk osteoderms of the earlier terrestrial species were only a quarter of the size. While reconstructions have given Berksuchus a long, croc-like snout, this is largely speculation as only the back half of its skull has been found. Like the pectoral girdle, the atomical features of the brain case were a mosaic of basal and derived traits. Among the more crocodilian-like traits is what appears to have been support for a small skin flap, similar to the ones modern crocodilians close when underwater to protect their ears. While crocodilians have an extremely strong bite force, the muscles that open the jaws are rather weak. Based on the attachment points for muscles on the cranium, it seems the muscles responsible for opening Berksuchus' jaws were comparatively more powerful, like those of early Neosuchians. Also like those early Neosuchians, there were less attachment points for the muscles that open the jaw, resulting in a weaker bite force. It therefore seems that crocodilian-like jaw muscles were acquired long after they evolved their semi-aquatic lifestyle. This means that Berksuchus would have been incapable of hunting prey even as large as what modern dwarf crocodilians can take down. As for what Berksuchus did eat, it is speculated to have hunted small animals, particularly aquatic invertebrates. 
Berksuchus's fossils were found in the Toqui Formation, which during the end of the Jurassic period was a river delta. Not much is known about the species that lived alongside Berksuchus, a major exception being the strange herbivorous dinosaur Chilesaurus. Fossils of diplodocid and titanosaur form sauropod dinosaurs have also been found in the Toqui Formation. Berksuchus has been nicknamed the Grandfather of Modern Crocodiles. However, it was not their actual direct ancestor as it lived far too late. While Berksuchus was a close relative of Neosuchia, it wasn't a Neosuchian itself. True Neosuchians had already evolved by the time Berksuchus was alive, and likely Neosuchian fossils date back to the early Jurassic. Though not their direct ancestor, Berksuchus is still important in understanding crocodilian evolution since the fossils of early Neosuchians are either mostly limited to skulls or, in the case of the Atoposaurids, from species that had reverted to a comparatively terrestrial existence. There is also a gap between the most basal Neosuchians and their terrestrial ancestors from the early Jurassic, obfuscating the order in which many new traits were acquired and primitive traits lost. The discovery of Berksuchus has helped to rectify this, showing how many traits evolved relative to each other. Therefore, Berksuchus may be better thought of as a crocodilian equivalent of Deinonychus. When it was first found, Deinonychus's anatomy provided strong evidence for a connection between birds and dinosaurs even though Deinonychus lived long after the first birds evolved. Berksuchus has done the same for crocodilians. While the evolution of Neosuchians from their terrestrial ancestors was already long established, Berksuchus has helped show how it took place. Its impact is likely far from complete, as Berksuchus is only known from limited fossils. Filling in the gaps in Berksuchus's anatomy could help to further fill in the gaps in our knowledge of the evolution of crocodilians. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.